All righty, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us at AWS Michigan Meetup. We have returned. Um, got a couple new folks in the uh, audience today, so I got to explain how the catch box works. If you guys have any questions at all during Kyle's presentation, uh, you grab it and talk directly into it like this. So if you have a question, you kind of do it like this. It's not going to pick it up. Yeah, what's up? Here we go. Oh, it's nice and soft, too. Though. Yeah, so, yep, make sure you use the box if you have questions. The question is, how do I use the box? Just like that, you did beautifully. Thank you, Adam. So, yeah, without any uh, further ado, it's Kyle Robertson. Talk, Robertson, about AWS Comprehend. Cool. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Good. 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 Uh, so my name is Kyle Robertson, software engineer. Uh, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a service in AWS called Comprehend. Um, specifically, we're going to focus on the sentiment analysis features of it, but we're going to go through a bit of everything. Um, so the goals here. Uh, to come out of this, I want you to be learn what AWS Comprehend is and its abilities, uh, learn about various use cases for using Comprehend, and see an example that uses sentiment analysis in action. All right, so what is AWS Comprehend? So it is a natural language processing service that allows you to cover, uncover insights and connections from text. So you can feed it text, and it can uncover things like uh, the sentiment of, of the text, uh, entities and key phrases, so like it could extract like the name of a place, like a food, like if you're like a, if it's like a restaurant review or something like that. Um, it can also do PII detection, uh, and you can also train it. So those are like sort of the default uh, things it can extract out, but you can also train Comprehend. Uh, to get custom insights. So the example that Amazon shows is like they give, they feed, uh, comprehend with like a list of movies and like a category. And then w you can run the model uh, against like movie data, for example, and then have it make those relationships. Um, we're not going to go into that in this talk, but just something to note if you're looking at comprehend. So let's talk a little bit about sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is when you classify data as positive, neutral, or negative, or, or mixed as well. Um, so you take like a text review, for example, and then it can look at it and look at the relationships, look how your the emotion in like the text, and classify it as such. Um, it's really useful for product reviews, anything like customer surveys, anything that like you're getting feedback on like your products or your business. Uh, it's very useful to, 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 to use sentiment analysis for, because you can get data that you can then actually run reports on, display, uh, you know, look at trends, things like that. So using Comprehend with sentiment analysis. So Comprehend uh, can look at two things with sentiment. It can look at overall sentiment. So like if you give it just a blob of text, it'll look at the whole thing as one unit and calculate a sentiment. It can also do targeted sentiment. So it will look, it kind of uses the features of like being able to uh, find entities and key phrases and then figures out the sentiment of like when you refer to them. So like, let's say you had a review and you were like, the salad was great, but the pizza was horrible. It would be able to say, okay, there's pizza and it's a negative sentiment and then there's salad and it's a positive sentiment. So to kind of give an example, let's go into the AWS console. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go to. So I kind of just go through like the basic features before we go into like deeper into sentiment analysis. So you can do retail, real, retail, real time analysis, and you can also do analysis jobs like in the background, like if you have a lot of data. So uh, for example, here they give you sort of like basic input text. So I could say like, you know, the salad. It was great, but but the pizza sucked. Okay, experience overall. By the way, my SSN is one one one. 
it's not, but uh, this will show this will show the uh, the PII detection. So, for example, if you go to PII detection, you can see it it found this entity. It detects it as a uh, social security number, and it gives like a confidence number. So, like 0.99 plus is basically like we're we're very sure. Um, but if we go to the sentiment, you can see like it looks at the overall sentiment. It it sees that it's a mix because like you you kind of gave like one good example one bad example uh it got a little little tiny bit positive but like it, it overall found it mixed but then if we go to target sentiment you'll see uh it detected these entities pizza and salad and if you click on it it figured out hey salad is referred to positively but pizza is referred to negatively so you can kind of make relationships here of like you know, analyzing reviews and finding like when specific products are mentioned and being like, hey, like, you know, this one product is, is always reviewing very well, but this other product is not reviewing so well. Maybe we need to focus on that. Uh, and beyond that, there's also, okay. yeah. 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 Why there's no apps which analyze sentiment? of stuff you know like for example my wife when we go to restaurants she has to check yelp and scroll through everything you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 check that it's good whereas this could be actually quite useful based on 10,000 reviews we get this sentiment for fish but this for the burger yeah so uh to kind of give like a real life example i know at a past job they they made like software that would basically look at twitter and like get the last x tweets that mention the, the product or the company and like measured in real time sort of the sentiment and like specifically the goal was like trying to figure out like if if there was a lot of negative sentiment happening like it, very quickly maybe there's something wrong with the, the site that we're not seeing yet things like that um and i'm sure i i have to imagine other companies probably have like background jobs that are like taking data from a data warehouse and like doing this analysis um uh, but I mean, overall, it's pretty quick. I haven't done like anything with like a huge dump of text, so it could be slower. But like you know, for something like this, it's pretty quick. Um, any other questions before? Yes. Uh, I was wondering, um, since I'd never heard of this service, yeah. I was wondering if you know when it became generally available or like loosely how like how long it's been around and. <laughs> No idea? Okay. No. <laughs> I can look, I have the Google, I can look it you, up. You, you can, okay, Google. <laughs> two years? Two years? All right. Well, now we know. Cool. All right. So, let me go back here. All right. So, let's go into a little demo here. So, I made a, I made a website that is a store, and before anybody sees it, just know that web design is my passion. So you can see, <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, so we have this product, right? Uh, so this actually got sold in like Australia, I think, Mountain Dew Doritos, um, which I would be curious about the taste. Um, uh, so some people already left reviews. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty mixed. Some, somebody said it tastes like drain fluid. Uh, I don't know how they knew that, but uh, let's leave a review. So how, how does everybody think this would taste? All right, so let's let's just say it's pretty gross. Uh, I can't understand why anyone would like this. So I have it set up here right now, where like when I click submit, it'll like synchronously do the uh, analysis. So, okay. yeah. If it's gonna pick up, <clears throat> uh, could you write? Uh, I'm gonna now kill myself. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh my god! They, because that's <laughs> no, they, they have algorithms, right? In built into ex, uh, extreme <laughs> violence and extreme. I'll things. leave that for you to try on your own time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure it would probably try to filter out violence. I would hope, but you never yeah. know. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's all the sentiment was negative. I, I closed out of the alert. Um, but like, 
yeah, you know, doing it synchronously is fairly quick, but like, do we want to do it synchronously for like every time, especially if this is like a high traffic website? Like, we probably want to do some of this asynchronously because we can and we don't really need that data right away. Like, you know, we don't need the sentiment right away. It can be calculated later on for reporting purposes. So, I did a little setup here to kind of simulate a pipeline of doing this sort of asynchronously. Um, let me go back here. So to kind of give like an overall architecture. So we have this website, which talks to an API. That's sort of like the storefront. Uh, it writes reviews to a Dynamo product review table. And then when something is written, it triggers a Lambda or a Dynamo stream event that uh, goes to a Lambda that calculates the sentiment and then writes that to sort of like a metrics table. And then uh, I have set up a uh, Athena. So we can use Athena, which uses a Lambda to connect Dynamo data to Athena so we can query the data like SQL-like. So let's go through that. So we'll go back here. I'll write another review. Um, let's, go, let's go positive this time. <laughs> the, this product gives me the will to live. <laughs> Go more positive. <laughs> Go more positive. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure that will, yeah, obviously very positive sentiment. So, so we go, okay. So to kind of get, you know, show kind of behind the scenes, we have these two tables, right? So if I go to product reviews and uh, let's just do a refresh. So uh, I have, you know, when, when the review is written, uh, the review itself, and then if we go to this metrics table, I have the uh, sort of the, the, the product ID associated with the review. And then I, so the way that sentiment works is it gives you a number for each sort of like scale. So negative, neutral, or positive. And that's kind of like the confidence level. So uh, in this case, for this, this, this top review here, the, the confidence level is very high. It's 0.99. But then like, if you look at negative, it's like 0 0.0000, whatever, right? So, like, being able to look at this data would be interesting. So, if we go to Athena, I can now query this data. So, for example, I can get, uh, we can get, and I, I noticed Athena's kind of slow. I don't know if anybody else has used Athena, but even for, like, this very small table, it takes a long time for some reason. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, oh, I was doing average. Uh, so we can we can start making relationships in this. So let me just do another query to get all the data. So uh, did I? Oh, I'm, I didn't get star. Sorry. Live demo time. So you can see, here's all of our data. So we can start doing things like, okay, uh, I want to see how many positive reviews I have, you know, as a very basic uh, uh, example. So we'll do where sentiment is equal to positive. And cool, yeah, we can see all the positive reviews, but like, what if I only want to start tracking reviews after a certain date? So like, let's say for example, I got a bunch of feedback and uh, I t totally revamped uh, some part of like a product or the business and I, I kind of just want to see from the time we launched that, how the sentiment is have, like feeling overall. So I can also filter by date in this case, so I could do like, uh, and, Eight is greater than, we'll do zero, 09. I think that all of this has the same date, so it won't be too much. But you can, you, you get the idea here. So like, you, you know, exposing this data lets you start creating relationships and you can look at it in a very analytical way because you have actual numbers that sort of like represent confidence levels and in, in, in different sentiments. Um, so you can like, you know, start looking at trends over time, uh, you know, look at like when you launch a new product, Hey, like what's the overall sentiment and kind of get a feel to be able to pivot quickly. Um, 
you know, probably what would be happening is like this data would probably be going to a data warehouse and then uh, for example, it, you might be using like in Azure world, Kusto to query it and maybe Power BI to make dashboards uh, based off Kusto queries. Um, in this case, we're just using Athena, but uh, you could really export this data to any tool that you want to. Uh, yeah, so that's overall, uh, that's it. Uh, Comprehend is a pretty cool service. Uh, interesting, like the kind of sent the data you can get, like this is kind of like the first time I explored this sort of topic and I thought it was pretty interesting. I know I always wanted to like make something kind of like what I mentioned where like it scans Twitter to get like sentiment on like a product to kind of figure out like when something might be wrong or predict, try to predict. Um, but I thought it was cool and I might mess around with it more. So that's, that's what I got. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Enough to figure out the volume and the time. Like, have you played with a lot of data, and how much data do you have to give to get some sentiment, other than just one line? Sure. Like, I haven't played with it at a, at a huge scale, but I think that's where like you can ha you can tell it to run jobs, and you you say like, hey, the data is in this location, so that kind of gives you the ability to like, if you have a massive amount of data, it's like millions of records, for example. Yeah. Uh, that's a way to kind of do it asynchronously. Um, without like impacting uh, your your systems. Right, um, and do you, do, uh, have you played around with the setup? Like, do you associate any instances, or do you just use it as an API where yeah. you just so, feed the text? So there's two ways you could do it. You could use it as an API, and you can just give it text. Um, and then when you want to do those like big jobs, there's like the concept of a job in uh, in Athena or not Athena, but um, Comprehend. So if we go to like Comprehend here, there's analysis jobs. So you can you can create you in this case you create jobs and you give it input data. But otherwise you would do you can do retail analysis. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Hold on. And there you go. I just talk directly into this. Um, how does it do with ambiguous uh, statements in, in, in your examples? Say if you said, my life will never be the same. That could go two ways. Yeah, right. So it pro like what I've found is generally like when it's not sure, it usually says mixed or neutral. Um, and I mean, we can, we can take like right now, we can literally say like, my life will never be the same. Now, without context, like if you said like this product's great, it, like my life will never be the same. Uh, when it have yeah. Context, does it have any ability to, to do like say some large language models that might say, uh, what did you mean by that? Yeah. Is that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or elucidate your thoughts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, like if we took like literally that text, it 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 like it's kind of distributed. Uh, interestingly, negative's a little bit higher, um, and that might be really a, a consequence of like whatever data. Whatever yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, hmm. yeah. The question, the question is if it's, because you have nearly 20% 20, 20 bias in here, right? Yeah. So if you have a million people saying something about your product, you have 20% bias? Yeah. That's just they think. Yeah. Set. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so other than the uh, obvious use case of like reviews, yeah, is there any other use? Is there use cases that other people are exploring with this tech? That I'm, I'm just trying to think. Like the whole time you're talking, I'm like, this is really interesting. I'm wondering what else it could be used for besides just. I mean, maybe even content moderation. I don't know. Like, is there other use cases yeah, for it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, like, yeah, I think I think there's a there's a few that like kind of I've seen based on using it. Um, so, like, obvi the obvious one that they kind of provide is like looking for like looking for specific data that's like you know your PII or like you can even probably train it to like give it phrases that you, like for moderation. Like, you know, you can give it data. It's like this phrase is bad for example, and then like run this against that model and it could like fill, like show you, hey, this, this, this word was mentioned in there. So you could probably use it for moderation like that. Um, 
I think it, it, they really seem to like, and from what I've seen online, there's been a real focus on like sentiment. Like sentiment's like the big thing that people use this for. Um, and I think specifically like targeted sentiment because you can, you can kind of create those like deeper relationships between like actual, like actual entities rather than just like looking at one big sort of overall uh, sentiment. Yeah. Do you know of any, um, is there any like use cases of real world applications where you, like of companies you've seen use this that you're aware of? I'm, I'm happy to look that up too and Google yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know if you knew of like this company's doing it and this is how they're using it. It'd be interesting to kind of. I know that at GitHub, I don't think they're using Comprehend because GitHub, Microsoft, yeah. but like the same sort of concept they're using like NLPs to like look at like user feedback um, and, and kind of get ideas of like what the overall feeling of GitHub is like for a new feature or like an existing feature if there's been like changes or something like that. Yeah, thank you. Um, is it possible to um, calibrate it somehow for um, topic that is uh, for a sentiment uh, about a topic, given topic, for example, in construction? Uh, there's an on-site, which happens literally on-site, yeah. and off-site construction. Yeah. Is it possible, and people will not, some will say this is bad, this is good, which is obvious, but mostly people will be talking about pros and cons in general, so it's very vague uh, whether uh, whether it's something is positive or not. Is it possible to somehow use it in such a case? So if I'm understanding correctly, like in your example, like if you're just saying construction, right, there's there's kind of like different different parts of construction that have like, it's like unless they, they specifically like mention that sort of like offsite or onsite, like if you just said this construction site sucks, like let's say for example, as an example, it's not going to know like, hey, this is an offsite, you know, construction or onsite construction work. Um, so you'd have to like explicitly say like, Hey, like uh, this construction, like this construction project's been rough. Like when we're on site, like this and this happens. Uh, but when we're off site, like these these things happen. And then when you do targeted sentiment, it can kind of see like, okay, you said off site, and then you said this thing was bad about it, for example. And then it's like, okay, off site, the the sentiment, like based on your your sentences after mentioning off site, were negative. So it makes that association. Um, the transportation cost of off-site constructions are likely to be uh, higher than on-site. However, on-site there are delays due to blah blah blah. Uh, is it is it uh, comprehensible by something Let's try like it. this? And <laughs> Let's try it. We got uh, it here. What did I say? So um, I'll say like the uh, transportation cost of of off-site construction are likely to be higher compared to on-site construction. However, complexity and delays are in on-site construction are frequent and can be problematic. Yep. All right, let's try it. Sorry, analyze. Uh, there we go. So interestingly, like if you did target sentiment, it didn't actually detect anything. So it wasn't able to, to create those relationships. I'm curious if we go to key phrases. It does detect some key phrases, co complexity and delays, on straight construction. Okay, so, so this is, a, it, look, it looks like it, this is more a explicit language tool yeah, I think I think it's one of those things where like it it really relies on yeah be like it the vaguer you are the harder it is to create those relationships for this and that might be a limit of like either how they trained the the model or just maybe the model itself in general like is there something like this for LLMs? Uh, I I am not sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, one of the real world examples of something like just a few years back. Yeah. We wanted to know what the temperature of a customer was that was 
putting in a uh, help request. Okay. So we can then prioritize by this is a really urgent, whether they said urgent or not, you can yeah. tell they're getting upset. Yeah. That's a classification and a sentiment. Is that something you'd have to custom code here or do, would they have that as one of its? So I think I think that would kind of be where targeted sentiment is because it, it like will classify different things. How does uh, it input to that? Is there, how does it train itself on that? So I mean, I don't like for training, like whatever is built into here, yeah. I'm not sure exactly like what models they use. Um, you can always, to be fair too, like if you want to create specific relationships, like let's say um, you wanted to create a relationship where like, if the text has this, you know, this phrasing that, that generally means that it, it's more urgent than, than others, you can feed that um, in custom classification. So like you give it, you give it like, uh, so if we go like create a new model, so you give it either like plain text documents or like whatever, um, and you could you could feed that data where it makes those relationships. You give it more training data, and then you can start running it against your model that you've that you've given data for. Old systems like the uh, Natural Language Toolkit Python library. Yeah, it has a you load a file and it's a big. Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, it's a glossary of some sort, uh, and uh, it should have some inkling. But it's not all positive and negatives. But there are some common themes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so there's probably all kinds of different ways of, of of using that. Just to just to know, and like the priority, you could do a query if the revenue or the risk with this particular client, how much they've spent, right? Plus their anger, we'll move them up the queue just a little bit yeah. because we. We're, we're told to do that. Yeah. But we're, so now we have some way of measuring that rather than before we even talk to them. Yeah. So that, that's something. No, that's good. Yeah. That's a good example. Thank you. And it seems like GCP has something very similar. They even call their analyzer. Yeah, I think, so I think all curious. the, yeah. So it'd be fun to see the differences. The responses we need to get here in yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious to compare like all like Azure and Google's to see what's the like different. Just curious if the um, pricing wise, do you have any insights? Uh, is it is it expensive to hit the API or so most most you know you start free with AWS, yeah. but at scale, some of the serverless stuff can get cost prohibitive. Just wondering if you yeah, could. it's like one of those things where like yeah, you get somebody free and then like they charge you per like after a certain number of requests, they start charging you per request. I don't know, I don't know the exact number. I'd have to look it up, but. Well, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Nice example.